What's up, ladies and gents? No Dr. Pepper this time. Drank it all down. But uh, today, or in this video, rather, uh, I'm doing a review of a film from one of my favorite directors. Um, last video, I did uh, a film I'd never seen from a director quickly rising in the ranks as one of my favorites, Howard Hawks. That movie was His Girl Friday. Um, the first one that I could find for um, my favorite director of all time, by the way, Frank Capra, uh, director of my favorite movie of all time, It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, the first one I could find that was like the earliest film from him that's available uh, for me to watch without having to pay anything extra for it uh, was Ladies of Leisure from the year 1930. Um, so a little bit of background on this really quick. First off, watched it on Amazon Prime, um, totally free. If you've got Amazon Prime or if uh, you uh, have a friend or relative that has Amazon Prime and uh, they'll allow you to use it, look it up, find the movie, watch it. I definitely am going to give it a seal of approval. Uh, definitely worth watching. Um, now, I will say, I don't think this is as good a movie as Howard Hawks's, um, His Girl Friday. Not as good a movie at all. Um, this is a pre-code movie, uh, for a little bit more background. Um, some of you might know about the pre-code era. The pre-code era basically means that there wasn't the, the film code, uh, that was, uh, that was instated in sort of the mid, the early to mid-30s. Um, Pre-code movies, generally 32 and before, uh, they have sort of more explicit themes, uh, let's say. So, for instance, Ladies of Leisure, um, this movie deals with prostitutes and party girls. Uh, these would be women, uh, party girls that is, we know what prostitutes are. But uh, Ladies of Leisure and party girls would sort of be uh, these women who would be like dates for hire. Sometimes sex would be involved with that, sometimes it wouldn't. Um, with our particular girl, I think maybe involved, maybe not. Her uh, her roommate definitely is involved in uh, uh, probably something closer to prostitution. Well, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, I've got my Malton here. Uh, this is the 1999 movie and video guide. Uh, his review of Ladies of Leisure gives it two and a half stars. Um, and uh, let, let me just go ahead and say, um, I think I can rank it a little bit higher than that. Uh, IMDb has it sitting at 6.7. Pretty good rating. I'd probably put it around there. I'd probably give it a three out of five stars, something like that. Uh, six and a half, maybe even a seven out of ten. Probably not a seven, probably around a six and a half. And basically the story is that uh, this, this party girl, uh, played by Barbara Stanwyck, a frequent collaborator with uh, Capra, she, uh, she gets involved with this upper-crust playboy who is an artist, and uh, he, he sees her and kind of sees a purity in her despite the fact that she's got this sort of illicit career going for her, um, and he decides he wants to paint her. So uh, she's gonna, he's gonna use her as a model. Originally starts out, you know, paying her for it and everything like that. But romance sort of follows, and uh, these these two crazy kids start falling in love. So, and this is of course against the wishes of um, of his parents. This in some ways is kind of like a, a Romeo and Juliet type story. Um, not quite, kind of a prince and the pauper, uh, or princess and the pauper kind of thing going on, um, and, uh, and I gotta say, the, the story's kind of, it's kind of shaky. Malton notes this, and I think I can say as well that it's, it's a little bit of a shaky story, not the best, uh, the dialogue is okay, not the best, uh, definitely not up to snuff with some films of that period. I would say, for instance, that Dracula, uh, produced in the, name, the same year, has, a, has much better writing. Not that you can really compare them. They're two very different films. But 
Uh, Capra has this sort of fluid and very fluent directing style that uh, that really pulls you into a film. Uh, there's always some things that you're going to be able to count on with Capra, for instance. You've got uh, certain themes he's dealing with. And despite the fact that this woman's a prostitute, uh, Capra seems to have a heart for these sort of downtrodden characters. You know, she doesn't want to be this. Uh, she doesn't want to be this way. Um, and the, the upper crust playboy, he doesn't even want to really be that way either. And so because they both sort of share this, this longing to be something more, uh, they do end up becoming something more. They're, they're better uh, than what they're made of, you know. Um, Capra always has sort of a, an interesting metaphysical point of view. Capra always sort of assumes that this is a universe that is endowed with specific, uh, specific um, qualities. It has a creator. It's uh, God exists, and um, men and women are subject to God, but also loved by him. And so because of that, because of this sort of universe created by a loving creator, um, uh, his characters are always going towards towards something good, um, even if they're not perfect in themselves. Uh, and they may not even end up perfect. They are in imperfect relationships. For instance, uh, this playboy, he's kind of, he's a little bit abusive, to be perfectly honest. Uh, he uh, He's controlling and speaks to her somewhat like a child and uh, speaks to her as if he's not, if she's not up, as if she's not up to snuff which is much similar to sort of what his dad would believe, even though he's totally against what his dad believes. He still has that ingrained in him. He's an imperfect being. Um, and one of the great things about Capra is, is that even though these characters are moving towards a sort of idyllic point of view, uh, an idyllic life, they're still not perfect. Uh, one of the great examples of this is... George Bailey's character in It's a Wonderful Life, but we're not going to review It's a Wonderful Life. I've already done that on this channel. I'll probably still review it probably once a year <laughs> because I love it so much, but uh, Ladies of Leisure has that same thing going on. These characters are imperfect, but they're moving towards something closer to truth and closer to goodness. Um, the movie, in that respect, has a, as, a, as a great undercurrent. Um, it's not so much the writing as it is the presentation, and um, that's sort of how Capra does things in some of these early pre-code movies, um, I've come to understand. I, I haven't seen a lot of these. This is my first pre-code Capra, so I'm, uh, I'm interested to see when I keep looking into him uh, what, uh, what his pre-code movies have to do with sort of his greatest period, you know, the... Um, the mid to late 30s through 1946, uh, that great period. And uh, anyway, this is a really good movie. Um, it's not as good, for instance, as um, uh, His Girl Friday. It's, uh, it, it's, it's definitely about imperfect characters, and there are flaws in the movie. It's not a lot of great writing, but some of the shots are brilliant here. The way that he films women is beautiful, um, uh, the way that he's, uh, um, the, he, of course, meeting Capra, uh, the way that Capra sort of films love scenes, and um, I'm, I'm not talking specifically about sex, I'm talking specifically about scenes leading to love. Um, it's just beautiful. Uh, the way that he shows this character's transformation, uh, and Barbara Stanwyck's, um, her transformation as a character is very realistic and beautiful and something that you might even pluck out of real life. Uh, she does really well in this movie. Uh, it's my first movie I think I've seen Barbara Stanwyck in, and I've just enjoyed her so much. I can't say enough good things about her. Um, this performance is just straight up wonderful. Uh, one of the great performances, uh, great female performances probably of that year. Um, really, really great movie uh, in, in terms of just a great performance and a great directing style. Um, 
Editing's all right. Writing's not quite up to snuff. But there's some really good stuff in this movie. So I can't say that I loved it, but I can't say that it's not worth watching either. If you can find this for free, and it's probably in the public domain, I'm not sure about that, but I think it may be in the public domain, maybe check it out if you've got the chance. Uh, if you're okay with a good romance movie every once in a while, uh, uh, with a little bit of comedy and a little bit of, uh, uh, a little bit of sentimentality in there, uh, Capra's often known for being a really sentimental director, and he's always, you know, accused of making Capra corn, you know, corny movies uh, by Capra. I disagree. Uh, I think a lot of his his sentimentality is really sincere, um, and I think if, if you enjoy a good romance every once in a while, if you're a man who's kind of in touch with that side of himself, um, I'd say give it a try. It's It's a Pretty good movie, not great, but um, worth it to see an, an interesting kind of cool pre-code movie uh, that features a lot of talk about drinking and sex uh, before uh, the code when drinking and sex were kind of, you know, pushed down a little bit. But anyway, yeah, that's Ladies of Leisure. Uh, I say give it a watch. Probably a three out of five, maybe a six or six and a half out of ten. Not a great movie, but one that I think you should definitely check out. So, thanks for watching. That'll be the last video for today. I may try and have some more up tomorrow. Uh, I'm currently watching uh, a movie from another one of my favorite directors that I've never seen. So, I'm going to uh, gonna get onto that maybe later. Uh, Halloween is quickly approaching. Uh, I'll eventually be doing some movies that'll that'll sort of tie into the fall spirit of things. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Rock on if you like to subscribe. Talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.